Now, this is a recording for the Bethany Medipol Diaspora Ministry, dated Saturday, 4th November 2023. Well, we want to go on uh, with our study of reading of 1 Peter chapter 1. And today, we are going to look at a phrase that the Apostle Peter used, and it is called a living hope. Well, Peter begins very strongly on this, uh, in this particular verse when he said, Blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is our challenge. To be able to approach all the challenges and problems of life. Remember, we, remember, we have just read 1 Peter 1 and 1 and 2, where we talk about uh, pilgrims and strangers, about uh, what it means to be among the scattered ones, the dispersions, right? And then we have also read about the idea of being elect. So all these things are wonderful thoughts to, to have in our heart and in our mind. And the Apostle Peter went on further to say that we should be able also to say, Bless be. Bless be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This was the language of the old Sabbaths, where they often uh, write in their, in their Psalms, to bless the name of God, to bless the Lord for all that he has done, to bless the Lord for who he is. And this was Peter's challenge as well. Well, how can we say, bless be? And it's not an easy thing to be able to say that at all. Well, what does it mean? Firstly, we must ask ourselves. And the word is, to say bless be is to express our faith in God. So when we bless the Lord, we are basically saying that this is our faith in God. We continue to have faith in God. When we say bless be, we are also saying that we are offering praise to God. So we express two things, our faith in God, we also offer praise to God. Is it possible to mean that seriously? Well, Peter did. And so he said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what's the first reason to be able to say, Blessed be? Well, it is the fatherhood of God that Peter was caught up with. To him, this was a wonderful thought. To be able to think of God as the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, which he wrote about. But we must also understand that this also means that God, we can consider God as our Father. That, does it mean that we are very bold when we say that? No, we are just falling back on a special truth that the Lord Jesus Christ himself taught on this matter. And this is recorded in John 20. Uh, verses 16 to 18. The Lord had risen from the dead. Mary Magdalene was there and um, she was weeping uh, very badly because she thought that the body of the Lord Jesus had been stolen. And he, she couldn't find where the body was and she was very, very upset. She was afraid that people would do bad things to the body of the Lord Jesus and of course, she was very, very upset because she loved the Lord Jesus as her rabbi, um, as her teacher, as her savior. Well, then the Lord Jesus appeared to her and called her by name and said, Mary. The moment Mary understood that this was the Lord Jesus and he had risen from the dead, as he said. Well, she clung to the Lord Jesus. And so the Lord Jesus Christ had to say to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say to them, and these were the words of the Lord Jesus, I am ascending to my Father 
and your Father, and to my God, and your God. This is a wonderful truth that the Lord Jesus Christ taught his disciples. First, he addressed God as Father. This was his favorite term for God, always Father. He will speak to the people of God as Father. He will pray to him as God, to, to God as Father. Right? But he went on further to say, He is my God and your God too. My Father and your Father too. You know, as we dwell on this tremendous truth, our hearts must within us cry out, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This can be a very spontaneous response from our heart as we ponder this great and wonderful truth. Right? Now, this is something that we want to appreciate. Well, we read in John's Gospel, um, chapters 1, 12 to 13, John explains further, right, that the Lord has begotten us to be the children of God. Now, this is important for us to understand and appreciate, right? As many as receive Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in His name, who were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. What this text simply is reminding us and teaching us wonderfully is that God has begotten us to be His children. He has also begotten us to a living hope. And this is a wonderful thing to know. Why, why is it called a living hope? What does it really mean when we speak of a living hope? Well, Peter explains this very clearly. It is called a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. What does this mean? Well, there are many wonderful lessons to think about. First, we have a strong, certain, definite hope of the future. Right? Because it is a living hope. Now, this is important for us to understand. It's not a dead hope. It's not a past hope. It is a living hope. Secondly, it is a hope concerning the resurrection. Yes, when we die, our body will be either cremated or buried. Either way, the body will decompose and it will become as dust all over again. But that is not the end of our life. It is the end of the physical life, but it is not the end of life as such. What is it then that we have a living hope in? It is in the hope of the resurrection. And so Peter's language is through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, all the enemies of the Lord Jesus thought that when they have crucified him and he was now entombed and buried, that was the end of the story. That's all there is to it. But actually, that is not the end of the story. So we read in John 20 how the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to Mary Magdalene. She could recognize him. She knew that it was the Lord Jesus. He was the same as he was when he was alive before his crucifixion. And so when she saw the Lord Jesus, she understood what it means to have the Lord Jesus rise from the dead. This is the hope of the resurrection. This is the hope that Peter is talking about, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. So therefore, we do not need to fear death in any way if this is the uh, what we are reading in the scriptures correctly, right? So what is this thing that we need to focus on therefore? Well, <coughs> there are a number of things that we need to think about. <coughs> First, to understand the way we uh, deal with the word hope. When we use the word hope, we often speak of an earthly hope. We hope that things will become better. We hope that life will come back to normal. Uh, we hope that things will improve from here. That's an earthly hope. That's what we call a human hope. It's 
hope that a human being would have for the present life on, uh, on earth here. But actually, this kind of hope, our hope is actually quite limited. It is limit, limited to the country we live in. It is limited to the lifespan we have. It is limited, limited to whatever we may experience in life. That is a very limited thing. On the other hand, we have what we call a heavenly hope. A hope that Peter calls a living hope through the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. What does this mean? Well, this is a hope of receiving the same kind of resurrection body as the Lord Jesus Christ. It is to feel a great sense of assurance and confirmation that as God had the power to raise Jesus, the Lord, from the dead, so He will raise us from the dead because of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our heavenly folk must teach us to focus our thoughts on the Lord Himself. In the language of Hebrews 11, it is to focus on the heavenly city. This is our faith. So we need to remember all the things that we have read, that we have understood in order to build this hope. This hope that God has given to us is something most precious. And it is something that we must be challenged to further comprehend. And to go beyond comprehension to strengthening the sense of hope. And this hope was very strong in the life of Peter and in the lives of all the apostles. That's very obvious, right? So they, they were persecuted, they were cast into prison, they, were, they had to suffer physical beating, and a lot of people would be very greatly discouraged already. But we read in Acts chapter 5 that the disciples, apostles of the Lord, counted themselves uh, blessed, because they were counted worthy to suffer for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They had developed their faith and hope very, very strongly. And that is very obvious. And that is our challenge as well. Well, so as we look at this particular text, we must ask ourselves whether we can learn to do what Peter wrote. Can we learn to bless God at all times? It's easy to bless God in good times. When we have family around, we can celebrate our birthdays, we can celebrate our happy events. That's easy to bless God. The challenge is to learn to bless God in tough times. And that is something that Peter was able to do. That's why he wrote what he did. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has begotten us to a living hope through the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So what is our focus? And this is important. Our focus must be on God the Father because it is through Him that we are able to have this living hope. It is the Lord, our God, our Father, who is able to give to us this hope of a heavenly city. And so we need to, on our part, to respond by focusing on God the Father. Right? And our challenge next must be to be steadfast in our faith in the Lord. Now, this is absolutely important. So many of us have uh, we began in life with no faith. Then we found genuine faith. And then we went on to develop a little faith. The challenge, however, is not to stay in the region of the little faith. Our challenge is to grow this faith. So that we can say like Peter, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? who has begotten us into a living hope through the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. This is what we want to be able to attempt. Right? So then there's some things that we need to understand. There are the tough, the tough times that we face. And these times are tough indeed. But it is in and through the tough times of life that we can cultivate a stronger faith and hope in God. Sometimes when there is hardly any future to look at in our, in our human understanding or perspective of life on earth, 
That gives us an opportunity to think about hope beyond this life. Uh, an opportunity to cultivate a faith in God with a living hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to cultivate a far more dynamic approach to life than we have presently. May our hearts be challenged to cultivate a living hope within us. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the Lord Jesus and how he has brought to us, through his resurrection, a living hope. A living hope beyond this earth, a living hope beyond living on this earth in the flesh, but a living hope that will bring us to the heavenly city. Help us to remind ourselves that we are pilgrims on the journey to a heavenly city that God has prepared for us. Help us to rejoice in this truth and to be able to say, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Okay.